Hey guys, it's Ash here with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 10 worst Naruto games. For this list, we'll be looking at the most broken, janky, or just plain boring games that would make even Naruto turn in his headband. Which Naruto game do you have the most buyer's remorse for? Let us know in those comments below. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3pm and 8pm Eastern only at WatchMojo.com slash play. Number 10. Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles 2 <laughs> The nicest thing to say about this PS2 sequel is that it improved on its predecessor, though given the starting line, that's not really saying much. There's some glimmers of potential in its original story and combo-based gameplay. It's just a shame that it's wasted on a game with lengthy load times, excessive padding, and a noticeable lack of polish. Shadow Possession Jutsu! <laughs> There's a lot of clear-cut corners, and since the camera in co-op is straight-up broken, it's not even worth a good laugh either. Instead, Uzumaki Chronicles 2 is a lot like polishing a broken shuriken. It's prettier, but it still can't get the job done. Number 9. Naruto Shippuden Kizuna Drive On visual presentation alone, there's a lot to like with Naruto's trek to the PSP. The original storyline isn't half bad either, but then you have to actually play it. Despite its title, the real gimmick of this janky combat system isn't the Kizuna gauge, it's that you're fighting your own teammates, or rather, their terrible AI. <laughs> To be fair, the grindy stack growth and mashy combos aren't great to begin with, but it becomes tiresome even quicker when the entire level is spent reviving your beginner level companions. As a result, the whole system fails at a fundamental level. Suffice it to say, it doesn't come close to holding a fire style to its stylish cutscenes. Number 8. Naruto Shippuden Legends – Akatsuki Rising The village hasn't changed at all! <laughs> they added Grandma Tsunade's face up there! You saw that right, there's two colons in this game's title alone. It's redundant, a bit confusing, and way too long, which is also a good descriptor for the game itself. The biggest offender is the combat system, and really, calling it that is pretty generous. Putting aside the lackluster animations, there's really only one attack button. What? That's right, there's no combos, no player expression, and no reason to do anything other than spam your jutsu. But despite the fact that its gameplay was clearly an afterthought, it forces players to grind on spongy villains just to make the asinine difficulty somewhat bearable. Without a doubt, this legend goes down in infamy. Number 7. Naruto Shippuden Ninja Destiny 2 There are plenty of standout anime fighting games on the Nintendo DS. This just isn't one of them. Admittedly, the actual gameplay isn't too bad, but the truly horrid 3D visuals are hard to look past. Literally. Plus, there's basically nothing to do in this game but fight. Sure, there's some exploration on story mode and characters to unlock, but in the end, it all boils down to the same repetitive mashing. Over and over and over again. 
There is no real variation or difficulty, which makes the decent enough combat system quickly wear thin. Honestly, it's kind of impressive to make a game that both lacks content and still completely overstays its welcome. Number 6, Naruto Ninja Council 3. Repetitive side quests are nothing new to anime games. In fact, they're nothing new to Naruto titles either. But in Ninja Council 3, they are the game. There is no story mode. It's quite literally a checklist of missions to grind through. That is until you rank up and can do the same exact missions, but with more annoying enemies. Its inexcusable lack of content is only exacerbated by its frustrating gameplay, which never meaningfully changes throughout the various levels and characters. There is so little redeemable about it that at a certain point, Ninja Council 3 feels less like a video game and more like a list of chores. <laughs> Number 5. Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles By today's standards, there's just no reason for this game to exist. No, not because it's a slow plodding mess, though that definitely doesn't help, but because it's an inferior version of an already lackluster game. Due to the delayed schedule of Naruto's English dub, the American release had to edit or outright remove spoilers from later in the series. <laughs> The only thing worse than these repetitive missions is knowing that the game could have been so much more. Though to be fair, not even the missing characters could have fixed the lazy story mode or empty overworld. So in a way, the removed content serves as a merciful reason to turn this game off even faster. <laughs> Number 4, Naruto Shippuden 3D, The New Era Don't let the name fool ya, there's nothing new about this. It's just another Ninja Council game with a fresh coat of paint with the quality to go along with it. The clearly marketed 3D only delivers grainy character models, the occasional screen tilt, and flatter gameplay than ever before. There's technically an original story, but it's just a lifeless collection of tropes meant to justify more platforming levels. Plus, it's hard to take it seriously when the new villain is literally named Malice. Unfortunately, the rest of the story doesn't get any more clever than that either. The very last thing Naruto needed was another horrible side-scroller, but at least New Era has a lot of company. Number 3. Naruto Shippuden Ninja Council 4 <laughs> After three titles with severely diminishing returns, it should come as no surprise that Ninja Council 4 continued the series' decline into utter embarrassment. In fact, this is by far the worst of the bunch, which is truly a feat. While its 17 character roster should be a massive plus, the fact that a whopping 12 of them are locked behind online connectivity is just a Rasengan to the face. Not that it'd be fun to play them anyway, since the uninspired dungeons and infuriating enemies are somehow worse than they'd ever been before. There isn't even a reward for gathering the in-game collectibles. Instead, just like the experience overall, it's a complete waste of time. <laughs> Number 2. Naruto Shinobi no Sato no Jindori Kasen. Ah! Ah! 
For being one of the earliest adaptations of the series, this PlayStation title does an admirable job retelling Naruto's first arc. The issue is it does so inside of a board game, and not even a particularly good one. The novelty of its genre simply can't compensate for the distinct lack of the series' trademark action, especially when it's replaced by long-winded tins decided more by RNG than genuine strategy. To put it simply, this game just doesn't have any soul. Or depth or really, any fun value at all for that matter. Clearly, there's a good reason it was never released outside of Japan. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here's a few dishonorable mentions. Naruto Ninja Council 2. It's not as horrible as some of the other Ninja Council games, but that's still a low bar. Naruto Ninja Destiny. From a franchise inundated with generic fighters, you can do a lot better than this. Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Heroes 3. This promising fighter fumbles due to clumsy controls and too much grinding. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Naruto Shippuden Dragon Blade Chronicles It's a bad sign when a game's poor performance, monotonous combats, and atrocious level designs aren't even the worst parts. Dragon Blade Chronicles is still guilty of all those, but its biggest sin is that it doesn't feel like a Naruto game at all. It's like someone did a substitution jutsu midway through development, then tried to disguise a fantasy hack and slash as something it's clearly not. Predictably, it didn't work out. There's a litany of downright head-scratching design flaws, and forget any sort of fan service from the series it's named after. This is an embarrassing failure on all fronts, not just because it's a bad Naruto game, but because it's a bad game, period. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.